With the eyes of the world on Tokyo, controversy is erupting over uniforms that many are blasting as sexist. Somehow, we continue to have the same archaic discussions about women, what they can say and can't say, what they can and can't do, and apparently this month, about what they can and can't wear. It is the latest in a string of seemingly discriminatory rules targeting female athletes. Uniforms worn by female athletes have been in the spotlight at sporting events like the Tokyo Olympics and other recent competitions. And some competitors have had enough. When the Norwegian women's beach handball team walked onto the court on July 18th, the players chose not to wear their usual black bikini bottoms. Instead, the women wore matching pairs of athletic shorts during their European Championship match against Spain. The European Handball Federation ultimately fined the team 1,500 euros, or about $1,700, for wearing, quote, improper clothing, even though their male counterparts were allowed to wear shorts. We want flexibility, and we want the women to have the right to choose a clothing that is comfortable and allow them to perform at the highest level. That's, that's the most important thing for us. Meanwhile, at the Tokyo Olympics, Germany's female gymnastics team stood out from other competitors on July 25th by wearing unitards rather than traditional leotards. The gymnasts, who also wore bodysuits during the European Championships in April, said the choice of sportswear was meant to counter the, quote, sexualization of their sport. With the bodysuit, we wanted to show the campaign, it's my choice. We can always freely decide if we want to wear a leotard or a full bodysuit. Others have been scrutinized for their choice of sportswear. Alice Deering, the first black swimmer ever to represent Great Britain, will not be allowed to wear a swimming cap made specifically for natural black hair. The company behind Soul Cap said on June 30th that the sports governing body had denied their application for certification, allegedly because their product didn't fit the, quote, natural form of the head. Following widespread backlash, the International Swimming Federation, also known as FINA, later released a statement announcing that it was, quote, reviewing the situation. I, I'm really hopeful that it being under review, that um, something, some agreement will come about. I'm sure it will. Um, but uh, I don't want people to look at elite level swimming and think, OK, it's not open for me. I can't I can't wear my hair the way I want to. Um, I'll go find another sport because that that's not what we want. When volleyball became an Olympic sport in 1996, men's uniforms and women's uniforms varied drastically. Women were required to wear two-piece bathing suits. The men, on the other hand, wore tank tops and shorts. That changed in 2012, when the International Volleyball Federation added three more conservative options to the mix.